for quorum and all three members are present. Um, and I'll ask um, uh, Arlene if were there are any members of the public that would like to comment on any item not on the agenda. Um, please uh, use the raised hand icon or press star three on your phone. And I've seen no raise, Chair Riley. All right, thank you. Well, um, we'll bring it back to the uh, committee. We have an action item, several action items in the um, uh, agenda today. What is the adoption of the November 2nd committee amendment, uh, minutes? Um, is there any discussion by any member of the committee? Any comment? I move approval. I will second that. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, I'm going to ask again if there are any um, comments from the public. Arlene? Chair, I see no raised hands. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to the committee. Um, all in favor of adopting the minutes, please call the roll. Uh, Chair Riley, this will need to be a roll call vote. Okay, please call the roll. Yes. Uh, Director Evans? Aye. Director Adams? Aye. And Director Riley? Aye. Unanimous approval. Thank you. Uh, second item is discussion of the uh, recommendation to the board regarding the uh, ASR EIR report and follow up. Uh, I'll go to the general manager for a report. Yes, <clears throat> this was um, well, I think the staff was pretty clear. There were 8 questions that had. Probably more than 8 questions that came up, but there were kind of 8 questions that uh, we recorded that were kind of continuing to linger. Um, John Lear took the bull by the horns and has done some analysis that he'll share with you shortly. Um, Tyler Potter from uh, Denise Duffy and Associates is available to uh, answer in general terms the first the first question, and um, we can go from there. So, unless you want me, John, should I just go through Tyler's response and he can be there for any additional questions or? Yeah, I think that I think that would work. Okay. So the first question was, <clears throat> how do um, it isn't it the same pipeline as what was in the Pure Water Monterey expansion SEIR? And um, Tyler's response uh, is that the SEIR entailed the construction and operation of a new pipeline from Hillby Avenue uh, in General Jim Moore to. Uh, the south to two new extraction wells referred to as EW3 and EW4 in the SEIR, the treatment facility and other related water distribution system improvements. And uh, we do have a figure on that, but uh, I don't think we need to screen share for that right now. The modification in the addendum that uh, we were uh, lead agency for includes a new pipeline in General Jim Moore from uh, the intersection of uh, General Jim at Hilby, so roughly the same location, um, to uh, General Jim at Coe Avenue, which is basically the, the site of the ASR. <clears throat> Two new dechlorination facilities, one at the Peralta Well and one at Santa Margarita. And then um, I guess we can go on to say both projects are similar but there are additional items uh, that make them not identical. So the SEIR evaluated the pipelines in General Jim, which is a raw, raw water pipeline from the extraction wells to the treatment system, a backwash pipeline from the new wells to a percolation basin. And so those would be for expansion production. And then there was included a potable water pipeline from the treatment facility to the Calam system at Hillby Avenue. So that potable water pipeline can be basically described to include the pipeline that we're considering in the addendum, but the pipeline in the addendum is shorter because it's just that piece from Hillby to uh, basically the ASR location. Um, I think when you get through John's analysis, when we answer another question, why have staff been so 
supportive of it, um, you'll see that the uses of the the bypass pipeline are different and unique to um, delivery of desalination water. But I think we're in agreement that it it is a piece of the same pipeline as in the SEIR, um, which fundamentally provides either an alternative to being <clears throat> backed up by the delivery of desal water in the existing pipeline or as an alternative to the shared pipeline. And Tyler, if you have any interest in adding to that, you can raise your hand or. Yeah, Tyler's hand is raised. And Arlene is timing out while on mute. So I think we have a bandwidth problem. There we go. Here. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Tyler Hello. Potter from Denise Duffy and Associates. Yeah, go ahead, Tyler. Yeah, great. Thank you, Dave. I think that was a really good synopsis. And I just wanted to just add to, um, you know, I think the remarks that you, you provided earlier is essentially, you know, the facilities that were evaluated in the supplemental EIR by Monterey One Water included a number of additional improvements um, that you referenced, Dave, in addition to also, you know, several, you know, pipeline segments through General Jim Moore. And I think your comment, and I would just, you know, add to reiterate is that, you know, the pipeline that's proposed as part of the modification that was evaluated in the ASR addendum is, uh, you know, a shorter segment of what was included in the SEIR. And again, that additional feet, you know, it appears uh, about approximately 4,500 feet of additional pipeline is what would be entailed extending it to the proposed location of uh, extraction wells uh, three and four. Um, and I should also mention that in addition, there are some other Calam facilities proposed as part of the Pure Water Monterey expansion project, which also included uh, two additional uh, extraction wells uh, located at Seaside Middle School, which I had uh, failed to uh, identify in my email to you earlier today. So I apologize, I apologize for that uh, oversight, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Thank you. I'm going to George. There you go. Okay, sorry. Um, are, are we in dialogue with staff right now for questions uh, to uh, related to this? I mean, Dave, are there more more presentations? That's all. I, but was John Lear going to add? You're muted, Dave. Of course. Uh, and the second question is: Would the same bypass pipeline be needed anyway for for Pure Water Monterey expansion? John, I think uh, your conclusion is um, yes. Um, I think your statement in the email you provided on Friday was this pipeline is necessary to utilize the water supply project that we have today and not for future projects. Um, I think that'll become more apparent as John gets into his uh, summary for question three, which is how many months a year and how frequent on a water year basis would this pipeline be needed and effective? So, John, you want to? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, Arlene, can you bring up the uh, couple of slides that I prepared? Thank you. <clears throat> so, in order to address this question, um, we wanted to, uh, and we wanted to first understand where the, um, the, bottleneck we're, we're, we're coming up against is, and it is again that, um, water that is being recovered from pure water monterey it needs to move south in that one mile section of general jim moore and water that is to be injected and pumped off the river needs to move north and that happens um that that comes to a point where that's going to happen during the same months and so i took the highway one um flow record the historic flow record and i applied sets of 
the the in, in stream flow requirement rules to that to determine if a day was an injection day within uh, permitted injection or was not an injection day. And then I took all of the different water year types. So, um, the the district as as directors know classifies water years as different types of water year going from extremely wet to wet um to above normal normal and you move through these categories and each category is a 12 percent 12.5 percent and and with the normal category being two bins of 12.5 percent so it's just a statistical analysis where 12.5% of the time you would expect to have an extremely wet water year. Then if you moved and you said, if I was going to have an extremely wet or a wet water year, you would have 12 and a half percent and you would add another 12 and a half percent to it. And that would become the likelihood of having that type of water year. So with approaching it in that analysis, that type of analysis, um, we uh, applied three assumptions. One is that um, pure water Monterey would need to begin being extracted in March. So that means the actual physical use of um, the wells at the Santa Margarita site and the treatment facility at the Santa Margarita site to start moving, producing, treating water and moving it south to fill the um, Forest Lake tanks to meet the demand. Um, if there was a second assumption that if no dechlorination facilities are constructed and operated during an injection season, um, there is a phenomenon with disinfection byproducts that um, need about a month. You need to stop injecting for about a month prior to being able to extract water to be within the permit requirements for the Department of Drinking Water. Um, so that's assumption number two. And then we can say if um, we wanted to start extracting in March 1, we would then instead of um, uh, shutting down injection on May 31st, I mean, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, right uh, fe February and moving into um, extracting, we would have to shut down on February 1st. So if there's no dechlorination facilities, we lose injection through the month of February as well. And number three is if a bypass pipeline was constructed and now we can move water both directions, we could we could produce water at the Santa Margarita facility, move it south, and also move water through the bypass pipeline north and inject at the Santa Mar at the Seaside Middle School site at an at a rate of 13.3 acre feet per day. And that would claim back these months of 13.3 acre feet per day in the in the permitted injection times of March, April, and May. So the, the question then becomes, how many operational days were there in March, April, and May for these different types of water years? How likely are those water years to become? And then at 13.3 acre feet per day, how much water is that? So if you can advance to the next slide, Arlene. Thank you. So here we, you see on the left, we see the the bins. So um, the 12 point, and, and it starts down where, as I said before, a 12.5% chance every year of having a extremely wet water year. So if we had no bypass pipeline um, and a dechlorination facility at Santa Margarita, so that allows us to stop injecting the last day of February and start injecting on the first day of March. Um, you you want to say when is it used and useful and what type of water year types? You can see that there's a 12.5% chance of having an extremely wet water year. So out of those three months of um, March, April, May, you have 90 days. So you would have been able to inject the last three months if you'd had an extremely wet water year. And that turns into about 12, 12, uh, 1200 acre feet of water. And then the way that you read these is now if we said, what if we were gonna have, uh, what's the likelihood of having an extre a, a wet or extremely wet water year? Well, that's 25% of the time that's gonna happen. Um, and so that goes from um, being into the wet category and saying, okay, um, that's 81 days. So that's about um, 1100 acre feet. Then we move into above normal, which would be the 37.5% chance, which is about 
1,024 acre feet. And then you move into having a normal, which is a flip of a coin, and that's about 780 acre feet. So really, it is used at most of the water years, except for you know when we get into very drought, drought years. So I would say it's useful unless you're in an extended drought. So if we can go to the next slide, Arlene. This is no bat, no bypass pipeline and no dechlorination facility operating. So you, the difference between this slide and the last slide is you basically lose the injection you would have had in February as well. So these numbers are slightly, slightly larger, but I just wanted to compare the two because there was some question about um, how the disinfection uh, facilities would affect this calculation. So if um, anyone has questions, uh, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. think you're on mute, uh, George. Um, clarify the loss of the month of February. By losing the month of February, we lose a month of injection opportunity, which means less water to the uh, basin, right? Correct. And so the first chart shows us losing february or this this is the loss of water isn't it? Oh, this is this is this is a these are charts of missing days right correct this is the this is the volume of what you could you could read this chart and say if you don't if you don't construct these facilities so this is um dechlorination so saying if you don't construct the bypass pipeline and the dechlorination facility there's a 12.5 percent chance of missing 1200 acre feet there's a 25 percent chance of missing uh, over uh, uh, 1,777. There's a 35% chance of missing 1,024. There's a 50% chance of missing 780. So I was just trying to provide the directors with with an idea of what volume the water was and percent chance of that happening. So if you just toggle between the two, so if you take the 50% chance of, um, so this is no dechlorination facility and you lose you know, at the 50% level, 1,015 acre feet. So then the other one at the 50% level, this is with dechlorination. So you get an extra month of injection. And so your chances of missing is reduced to 780 acre feet at the 50% level. And that's because you don't have to lie, lie fallow doing nothing for a month uh, to deal with the disinfection byproducts. So, could I ask a question? Yes, please. Thank you. So this would be 12.5% chance of missing 90 injection days a year, correct? Correct, for operational year, yeah. Okay, so what I, I don't know if it would even make sense, but is there any way of uh, sort of like uh, telling me how much value 1200 acre feet would be and i'll tell you where i'm going to go with this i'm wondering again does the cost of the pipeline uh validate the the, the need for it so how much essentially money would it cost to have 1200 acre feet of water is it possible to put a number on that yeah, John, did you get an answer from, uh, I know Tim O'Halloran is on. Yeah, the, the, they're on the line. They can give us the, the, the thing. I, I would um, yield to you, Dave, um, on that question because it, 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 it uh, almost uh, matters when you ask that question. If you ask that question in water year 2022, and this amount of water allows you to not violate the um, adjudication decision or the um, CDO, that that incremental value of, of obtaining this water may be may increase. It, well, exactly. If you remember the chart <clears throat> that I showed at a couple of our recent meetings, saying where are we are to where are we today? <clears throat> with neither uh, Pure Water Monterey expansion nor the desal project, um, and we were showing relatively break even with the CDO, under the assumption that we would still be getting an average of 1,300 acre feet from the ASR facility, <clears throat> and that 1,300 acre feet would be a combination of 
actual in and out during that same water year, as well as withdrawals of banked or saved uh, ASR water. And so if, if we're in that mode, where we don't have a new permanent replacement supply, then on average, not having a 780 acre foot um, so source of supply <clears throat> could mean that you fall into violating the CDO. So that's that's answer one on the or answer part A on this, which is um, that could be invaluable. Uh, answer B <clears throat> is if we did have the pipeline, but no no new permanent replacement supply, and we didn't forego this, then yeah, for example, we would be saying, um, you know, in this chart, what's my 780 acre feet worth um, if it's an average year or a normal year? And with that, I don't know, Tim O'Halloran, did you get a, did you guys open bids? Let's see if we can unmute Tim. I just, I just unmuted you, Tim. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you know, we're still evaluating the bids. Um, our low bid is somewhere around five and a half million. Yeah, and so the rule of thumb has always been, <clears throat> you take that five and a half million to 5.5 times 13%, roughly, about $700,000 a year on the revenue requirement, 715,000. So it's in that seven to eight hundred thousand dollars a year of additional revenue from ratepayers. Um, <clears throat> you know the current total revenue requirement uh, in the Callan main system is roughly. Gosh, I, I, I won't get this right. Maybe Catherine or, or Tim, but like sixty-five, seventy million. I'm uh, oh, Tim. Did you want to answer that, or should I uh, unmute uh, Catherine? Yeah, I don't have the answer to that. Maybe Catherine does. Yeah, I see Ian's on as well at this point. I will unmute both of you, Catherine and Ian, to see if um, either of you can respond to that. I'm Catherine sorry, and Ian, I... you're both. Okay. Go ahead, Catherine. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have the answer. Yeah. yeah. Dave, I think that's in, that's in the ballpark, 65 to 70. Yeah. Yep. So if it's 70 million, that's a 1% a differential in um, overall revenue requirement. If it was collected equally out of rates, it'd be a 1% uh, impact. Question, Dave, when you do this quick uh, calculation to get 700,000, the amortization period is about what? Yeah, it's, <clears throat> well, you would say pipeline is 30 to 50 years. Um, but it's it's kind of a little cheater rule of thumb um, that any capital project, when it gets turned into uh, depreciation from rate base, um, it's it's usually you know, it's almost like a, uh, a capitalization rate in buying a business or buying real estate, uh, you know, an ongoing business. So you basically say that in order to recover that, uh, you know, rule of thumb is 13% per year, which. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite. Period, yeah. I'm, I'm not questioning the 13 percent. I'm questioning the uh, amortization period. You said 30 to 50 years because it's a pipe. Yeah, I mean, that's how it would really be rate based is probably uh, closer to 50 years. Um, Mary, do you have a follow up question on that or do you want to come back later? I'll um, unmute you. You unmute. All right. Thank you. I, I don't have follow up questions. The answers gave me, you know, a thousand 
questions that I don't even understand. So <laughs> I'll, I'll let it pass for now. Thank you. Um, I would like to, well, uh, Molly, unless you have a couple questions, I, I have a little bit, um, but I'll go to Molly first if you want. Thanks, Chair Riley. Um, just a question, a couple of questions. Um, you know, maybe it's been asked and answered, but why, why are we only figuring this out now? Why wasn't this figured out as part of the ASR project to begin with? I mean, it's been going on long enough. The desal plan has been talked about long enough. You know that the lo location was always going to be north. And water was coming from the river, which is south. I mean, there, I, it seems like we should have seen this before. And my second question is, so let's say for, for argument's sake that um, the pure water monitoring expansion with SEIR is certified, is that pipeline still going to be built or is just the addition, the additional distance that was not covered in this pipeline, would that be built? And if that's the case, how does that impact the environmental work that was done in the SEIR for that pipeline? Because it is my understanding that these two were looked at differently through different lenses in the EIRs. And now <coughs> build one, this one, we being Calam, Calam builds this one, and then they come back and they have to build the other one. They can't piecemeal it. So are we gonna have a redundant pipeline? Those are really my questions at the moment. That's that's a really good set of questions. Um, I see Tyler's unmuted. I think that the simple starting question is if if you took the SEIR, so if Monterey One Water certified, and none of the other uh, expansion wells or uh, treatment was desired at the time, could they just lift this little one point? Three mile piece of the pipeline from the pipeline that was approved or certified in the pure water SEIR. Dave, this is Tyler. Was that a correct, uh, question directed at me? I'm happy yes. to 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 address it. Okay, good. I just wanted to make sure I. I clearly understood. Again, again, for the record, this is Tyler Potter with Denise Steffing Associates. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, from an environmental standpoint, you know, it's, it's not uncommon to be in a situation where you have a, a project that was evaluated in, an, in another document and then subsequently, you know, there's been modifications or changes. My expectation in this circumstance um, and at least I guess stepping back one is just, you know, at the, on the onset of this meeting today, the, the CALAM related facilities that were described and evaluated in the SEIR included uh, four extraction wells, a treatment facility, and then a number of uh, pipelines uh, in General Jim Moore in addition to the segment that we're talking about here today as part of the bypass pipeline. So my, my expectation would be, and you know, I think CALAM can certainly uh, chime in if they, if they have a different interpretation, but my expectation would be if and when uh, Monterey One Water or another entity, you know, adopts and certifies and takes action on the pure water expansion, that those improvements would be constructed and implemented um, separately from the bypass pipeline with the intention that those all would be interconnected, for lack of a better word. So it, this isn't necessarily a situation, Director Evans, where it, it's piecemealing. It's more um, a situation, I think, where you would probably look at it from the lens that this is a project that has separate and independent utility from these other water supply projects. And so when we're looking at a project under that lens, the key things that you take into consideration is whether this project can be implemented separate from the other projects. Is it not dependent upon those other projects going forward? And in this case, I think, you know, the, the information that we've seen here today from Jonathan, as well as some of the other discussion items that we've had over the course of the last six months, really indicates that, that this bypass pipeline really is needed for the ASR program. And then separately, you know, in the future, it's, it's totally conceivable and possible to integrate those other improvements that are proposed as part of um, the Pure Water Monterey expansion into, into facilitating and utilizing the bypass pipeline. Does, does that address your, 
your question, Director Evans. I want to make sure that I, I captured it. Yes, but it makes me ask the question that, so if if the two projects are built, the two, yes, I recognize that in the Pure Water Monterey expansion, SEIR, there were other facilities included. Um, do, do all of those have to be looked at as being in place <coughs> at the same time? instead of as separate, complete separate entities, because now you're kind of clobbering General Jim Moore with a bunch of pipelines in the same location. And I just, it always seems like when we talk about different projects, that we always have to compare them to other projects that are happening at the same time. And since these two were looked at essentially in a vacuum without dealing with the other being built, do they now have to go back and look at, at from an environmental standpoint of how that pipeline and the other appurtenances look from an environmental standpoint with the other project already in place yeah that that makes sense and to, to your question you know my answer would be you know i wouldn't anticipate the need to go back and and reevaluate anything that was already previously addressed within the context of monterey one supplemental eir and i think and maybe i'm getting you know trying to interpret your your question you know the, this and again tim or ian i think could certainly you know provide additional clarification but I don't believe the bypass pipeline is necessarily intended as um, an additional pipe, pipeline. So you wouldn't be in a situation where the bypass pipeline is constructed and then let's say the Pure Water Monterey expansion project moves forward and then another pipeline is constructed along substantially the same uh, alignment. It would really be that incremental delta between um, the intersection of, uh, I believe it's co and General Jim Moore, and then that additional 4,500 feet or so, plus or minus, to the intersection just south of um, Ardennes Circle and General Jim Moore, where the Fitch military community is located. And that's the location where two of the four extraction wells are currently proposed as part of the Pure Water Monterey expansion. Okay, thank you for that, I appreciate it. Yeah, happy to do it. And if you have any other questions, happy to address them as well. And Dave, I can answer the um, the component of um, finding out when water is moving um, two directions and when that became a bottleneck is um, it was conceived that if a desal plant was built, um, it's it's been understood that the water that was going to be diverted from the river and then um, accounted for as going down uh, and being injected would actually be chemically um, desalinated water. So it would have pulled water off into kind of paper water, water transfer. But now we're in the spot where we actually need the physical chemi chemistry signal water from the from the valley to move into uh, move past each other in general Jim we're in that that spot yeah, that's John, right. if I may the I, the desal component of my question was irrelevant we knew pure water Monterey was coming online and we knew we would have ASR so we knew that one was going to be traveling in one direction and one was going to be traveling in the other I think I think that's true but I think that that was known not when um, the ASR pro because the ASR programs being uh, it it was a test program since 2001 and it's um, then it became a, a recognized project by the Regional Water Quality Control Board in 2009 and then um, and then the uh, Pure Water Monterey project uh, is coming on, along in the last five years and then trying to understand the timing and how we produce all of this water and how to comply with the, the state board orders at that point in time, looking at how to actually use the system to take advantage of the different um, uh, sources of water at the times it needed to be, that, that became evident at that time. Thank you. Um, I have, a, I have a few questions. Um, the um, the um, charts, John, that you put together um, are kind of uh, guessing at what what are the chances are that we're going to have a certain kind of rainy season, whatever that qual whatever that uh, description is. It's it's a guess. Um, do we have? I mean, do do we have numbers of actual experience in the last ten years of the volume of water? Does that cover enough of a variety of uh, rainy season types 
that would give us a real world number as opposed to these uh, just statistical uh, formulas? Well, these, these statistics come from, uh, what's the historical record up to now, John? 90 years or? Uh, yeah, the, the, I, I, bel I believe we have almost 90 years of stream flow. And so this is this is based on that 90 year record where we what we've done statistically is we've taken the <clears throat> the actual seasonal runoff and rainfall either um, and then lump them into these little 12 and a half percent categories with the middle two 12 and a half percent categories forming the normal year, which is then 25 percent kind of smack in the middle. So that's what these these refer to. So they're actually actually pulling from the historical data. Yeah, and, and I can um, add that I think what George, correct me if I'm wrong, George, you were asking um, if this is a. I can tell you statistically if a day was an injection day or not, but then you're inquiring into the percent efficiency of how the project operated during all those all those injection days well yes along along those lines because uh, you don't get permission to pump until there's a certain stream for a level i don't know how that calcul is calculated into uh and then there's a delay period of turning the pumps on and then turning them off and uh and i i just was wondering if there's some actual yeah day numbers I can I can answer that and and it's not I wouldn't go to look at yearly a, an, annual um, water year totals to get to that number, but I would look at um, you know it, you, you're correct it's it, you have an injection day you have to wait for them to come and then um, your how successful you are is how how good you use that day to um, capture water and so I can tell you that. Um, the, our permits are combined together 29 acre feet a day um, we've been slowly going through and removing bottlenecks in the system and we've had days um, that we can get up to 21 acre feet per day and so that definitely um, relies on every well in Carmel Valley working and and those days happen in February when demand and water demand and outside demand is low but you know usually during this time we're averaging 17 18 acre feet a day. Um, th this analysis assumes only 13 acre feet a day um, injecting at the Seaside Middle School site. So I would say that you would be able to function at 100% efficiency at 13 acre feet a day at one site. Okay, well, you've got the mar you built in the margin of um, that I was looking at lo lo looking for. Um, I want to I want to go away from the uh, the specifics here on the chart and go to a different set of questions. Um, why why would we be approving a project uh, when there are still two projects undecided yet? You know they're still in the pending stages, whether it's a uh, pure water expansion or desal, and. Uh, uh, don't those volumes have something to do with what this pipeline is all about? Well, let's go, let's make that a two-parter. Um, with respect to the volumes, I'm not even sure the answer. John, do you, do you have a, a sense of, of that? It, I, I'm not sure I understood. Um, um, so, res. Yeah, so either Pure Water Monterey or uh, Desal comes online it's conveying water from the north, substantially different volumes of water from each project. Does that have any impact on the decision? Wouldn't we want to know which project is coming first before doing a 1.3 mile bypass pipeline? And I think the you know the, the short answer is no because you can push more water through the same diameter uh, pipeline um just at a different speed but um it's a it's a really good question the, the second part of that question though is because there's been so much um confusion well, i don't want to say confusion so much disagreement over whether or not cal -Am has capacity to move the desal water south 
and Marina Coast Water District has said the shared pipeline does not have sufficient capacity and therefore they don't have the, the southern component uh, figured out. And that did appear in the uh, letter that the Coastal Commission released on Thursday last week, which is th this appears to be an unresolved issue. That is, you know, uh, that's more the the question that should be answered, I think, first. And that's, I think, based on my read of board members individually, is why the recommendation was to just sit and wait on this at this point, because we're missing a building season um, and, and wait and let the Coastal Commission, you know, Coastal Development Permit resolve itself and then bring this back in time for the 2022 uh, water year. And I would say uh, to to Director Riley that um, th th this is this is a, a problem that um, I've that I found in the uh, quarterly water budget planning that we do with Calam. So it's it's not really a future which project which project um, problem that that we're bringing to you. I'm bringing it to you as the infrastructure that's, that's in the ground doesn't work um, unless you do this. So that was kind of my motivation. Well, then if I can pursue a, just a slightly different angle, uh, this pipeline is expected to be in the same right of way as the Marina Coast Water District pipeline. Uh, what what are the reasons that we couldn't I don't know, jury rig, <laughs> uh, use uh, Marina Coast Pipeline for a period of time, uh, if they're willing to cooperate and make it available, why couldn't we work something around that op option uh, rather than building a new pipeline that tra traverses the same, same street, same roadway, same right of way? Right, which is what we're doing currently. Um, and I think it's just the volumes now <clears throat> of pure water extraction during the same time period of continued ASR injection have created a conflict in that little one mile, 1.3 mile uh, area. And that conflict being the shared pipeline. I mean, that's that's really the, the pipeline that we're talking about can only go in one direction. Well, but, but what that means is that we would miss the opportunity to double up <laughs> the you know the bypass service for a period of time are you are you are you suggesting that if we would if we were to use the marina coast pipeline we would miss the opportunity of the other direction at some point and that's what i'm looking at is the odds of how much water are we risking uh not getting if that uh, were if, if if that were in place and you say that is in place but what, what would we be missing? I think that goes back to uh, Mary's think, uh, original question. Well, yeah, it goes back to that whole um, percentage and water. So the 50% line is 780 acre feet, um, as an example, uh, which was with chlorination, I think. Check my, um, yeah, there we go. Which slide would you like? Uh, let's go to the second one. Next one. I think, Dave, that the um, I, I'm not sure if I see the source of confusion, but the shared pipeline is currently the the pipeline that okay. has the the problem with it, so it's already in use. Exactly. So let's go to the next slide, and we assume there's no dechlorination, so we have to sit a month. And one, one more, Arlene. Okay, that's the last slide. I'll go up one. Right. So yes. Yeah. No. The, ne the next one. Yep. Yep. So there, you'd be saying in a in a normal year, <clears throat> you're, you know, you've got a fifty fifty chance of missing a thousand and fifteen acre feet. And so that's that's the risk. I mean, that's the current predicament. I, I just, uh, Dave, I just have a hard time maybe with these numbers. Uh, but if we if we are averaging like 
1,300 acre feet a year with ASR. And if we have a 50% chance, we're missing 1,000 acre feet. I mean, yet I'm, the, the numbers don't sit right with me. Yeah, and I, I can speak to that because when you look at the historic record of what the district has done since uh, 2008, um, it doesn't take into account the build out of the two more well fields. So now you have a four well field. So you really need to start looking at the numbers beginning in you know 2017 because that's the actual facilities we have now. And those those were the years where we where we had over 2,000 acre feet of injection. And so that that does jive with a 2,000 acre foot year and losing half of that year um, would be the 1,000. But John, are, is the district, are you suggesting that the ASR volume of water that's used in the calculations for supply be increased to over 2,000 acre feet? I am. I'm not suggesting that. I'm just, you know, taking. I'm. I'm taking uh, the number of days that were w fell within permits um, in these different um, uh, times and multiplying them by 13 acre feet a day to just show what I believe would be existing conditions today if the pipeline were not to be built. So um, I'm not trying to forecast backwards or 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 suggest different numbers for supply. Yeah, and the reason we've been using 1300 uh, is we keep envisioning a world in which <clears throat> kind of what the Benito study showed for um, actually for the SEIR um, that we operate ASR on an annual basis currently, but you should really be operating it on an ongoing storage behind the dam kind of basis. And so if you have enough of those 2000 acre feet years, but you're only quote unquote scheduling to take out 1300 that you're building up the reservoir. And so then in the years where you only have 500 acre feet of injection or 300 acre feet of injection, or even four or five drought years in a row with zero acre feet of injection, um, you'll have enough banked water that you can still achieve your 1300 acre feet. So that's that's why that number kind of is shows up on charts as average supply from ASR. Well, I'm I'm I, I just have a discomfort level with this, um, but as much related <laughs> related to um, uh, not knowing what the future really looks like uh, in terms of supply. I mean, see, it seems to me we ought to know more about the supply sources. Uh, before we start uh, filling in all the places where we have uh, little problem areas, as opposed to trying to fill in problem areas and still not know about the water supply volumes, um, I mean that's that's a that's a key concern of mine, and I just I just feel better knowing more about where the bigger picture is, as opposed to this this uh, management uh, uh, bottleneck issue. Um, and I, I do feel like this project has been through several iterations uh, without uh, having a clear, to, in my mind, a clear understanding of what's the difference between them. I, I hear you, John, and I hear you, Dave, too, about um, uh, trying to cover the questions that we're all asking. Um, but I, I still feel like it's a project that's looking for the right justification as opposed to having the right justification up front and then ending up with a project. Uh, that, that's kind of my problem with the way it's been presented and how many cycles it's gone through and how many schematics we look at that are moderately different, modestly different, uh, but different. And it, it, that's the way it looks to me like it's a project looking for a, a, a full justification. I'm, I'm not at the justification level yet. Understood. Okay. Well, uh, I, I, I would be willing to delay this, postpone it. Is there a way that it could be denied without prejudice or some, some ver version of a legal standing that without prejudice so that it can come back if uh, the justification kind of, um, kind of hangs together and, and with all the logic that, that I think I'm looking for? Um, 
And, uh, and uh, I'm just, I'm just, as opposed to just. Director Riley, yes. you, you don't need to act on this. You can just defer it, continue it to a date certain or to a date uncertain. I, uh, I, I don't suggest that you to actually take an action to deny, uh, because that just becomes part of the administrative record and that makes it harder to defend if in fact we go down this path. So we can simply table it. Absolutely, you can table it. You can table it for uh, indefinitely. You can table it for a, a, a period of months or longer. Well, I, I, I think I would prefer then to table it indefinitely until until we learn more and we don't know. We can't predict that. I mean, maybe it'll be early next year, maybe it'll be in the middle of next year. Uh, but um, I, I, I see some, I don't, I don't see a time frame on bringing it back because it depends on other things happening before we bring it back. So there were a few more questions that um, that were not answered. Yeah, and we didn't really um, have a chance to get number eight answered, which is, you know, why wouldn't Cal Am want to do some of the things that Roger Masuda has suggested? Um, I'll be oh, honest God. with you, we haven't even gotten completely through the myriad of uh, reports and letters that Marina Coast Water Districts put together. So. Uh, that one's still out there. Do we have an answer to number five? <clears throat> yeah, that that was, um, I think uh, Tim O'Halloran spoke up about five and a half million is the lowest qualified bid, but they haven't confirmed that it's the winning bid. Okay. And so that was the, you know, approximately 1% on the rate base. Got it. Okay. So 5.5, 5. 5, I think he said million was the yeah. ballpark low bid. And Dave, if I may, um, I, I did have a brief conversation with um, uh, the State Water Rights Control Board, and they did uh, verify that um, if a process were started, it, it would to do any of these um, changes to water rights, uh, that the water rights holder should expect a three to five year time frame for that if it were successful. Yeah. That was the other permits, right? That was being discussed. The, the yeah. table thirteen and so on. Yes, that's correct. If you okay. were able to get through the um, the changing of the permits um, in the way that was suggested um, without any um, objections and um, having to settle, um, you you should expect a three to five year um, time frame was the answer to that question. It because I said, "Is this feasible?" and I was told that. Um, uh, they can't comment whether it's feasible. It has to enter into the process, go through the process. It can be hung. It could be three to five years if it goes through the process smoothly, and longer than that if it gets hung up with um, environmental challenges. Um, and one other question on the cost issue: um, Is there a um, is there a cost per acre foot? Is there a calculation or estimate on the basis of? If it goes through and if we're saving, I don't know, 200 and 300 acre feet a year, 500 acre feet a year, uh, what's the cost per acre foot in general on that calculation? To me, that would give a measure of um, its relevance. I don't, I don't need that calculation uh, right now unless it's. <clears throat> yeah. So if, if you assume about $715,000 a year and it got you an additional 500 acre feet, that'd be uh, $1,430 per acre foot of investment, which is consistent with the um, phase one ASR uh, pro overall production cost at, you know, the the way we calculated it back in 2011. Okay, well, that's an interesting number too. And is there a cost? Uh, I mean, is is a Calam? Uh, let me I'm back up a little bit. The EIR that we did uh, for that for this project, uh, there's a reimbursement agreement. Is somebody uh on the hook for some money here or is that pending does that kind of still be discussed if this is uh, continued in any way 
I can answer that, David, if you want me to. Um, yeah, it, to do this work, um, because the district would be the CEQA um, entity, it was done through a um, reimbursement agreement with Calan. So it, it's it's sitting in the position where the money's been spent, the district has, has um, spent the money out of its um, accounts, and we have not turned around to um, uh, ask for reimbursement, and it, it is maybe a slightly awkward um, situation where we were asked to do something and then didn't actually get it done. So I don't know how that plays out. No, I'm deja vu all over again. <laughs> well, well, I, I get that. Well, I'm, I'm not ready to make a decision on this today. I'm just seriously, it's, there's just a discomfort level with a number of questions. I still would like to get behind some of your projections, John, a little more. And I, I just think need to send, spend some time with you to understand them better. Um, and um, and the, 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 the dechlorination process of yes or no, uh, I, I think I understand that, but I'd like to understand it better. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm not prepared to vote on it, but I'm prepared to continue it if I don't know what the other board, uh, committee members think. I feel we should just table it for the time being. We can always bring it back. I agree with you, George. I feel, you know, I'm at cross purposes with this in some ways. Um, I, um, at any rate, I just feel like we should table it. I don't Mr. think- I'm Mr. Chairman, uh, in that case, a motion to table would be in order. Okay, well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll ask for a motion and, uh, and we'll see, okay. I move to move. I move to table this until a later date, undetermined. And, and I'll I'll second it for uh, discussion. Um, so uh, let's take it out to the public and see if there are any public comments. If you'd like to comment, please okay. use your raised hand icon or press star three on your phone. Hi, Arlene, this is Ian. Um, can you hear me? I don't have a raised hand on my phone. Okay, Ian. Oh, there it is, raised hand. We can hear oh. you. Okay, hey, thank you. Um, Ian Crooks with Calam. Uh, yeah, thanks for the robust discussion here tonight. Um, I think it was good and hit on a lot of various items. Um, I guess maybe in my own mind, I come at it from a different lens than what's being discussed. I, I see it as, it's a pretty simple concept that these pipelines, um, we worked together as a team to develop the general gym more infrastructure um, to fully maximize all water projects. Um, and particularly, we really made it concrete in terms of the Pure Water Monterey expansion EIR. So these facilities were all identified we sat around in, in meetings and figured it all out operationally how it would work. And then, but here we are sitting today with neither that EIR approved, that project, even to come online is years out. Um, any other supply, our desal is likely delayed for years. Um, so here we are sitting today um, facing the cutback next year, the cliff, and needing to maximize every drop of water that we have. And that includes the existing Pure Water Monterey facility. And I think John did a great job presenting how that can be done with the parallel pipeline. And this parallel pipeline is just a subset or a portion or what I would call maybe a, a sub phase or a phase one of the pipelines identified in the Pure Water Monterey project. It's not in any way different it's just a portion of that, those pipelines of that project that we recognize now as a team that, boy, we would like to have that first phase done now so that we can maximize our supplies for the community, make sure we're not missing a thousand acre feet. And, you know, what looks better to state board? I'd say we can't approve a pipeline and therefore we miss the opportunity to, to save another thousand acre feet. And that cost of that water's a thousand acre feet, seven hundred thousand, seven hundred bucks. Uh, it's pretty cheap water. 
Um, so that's the way I see it. Uh, I think it's pretty simple, but I think the cost is relatively very cost effective. And whatever happens with Pure Water Monterey, it would be built with the expansion anyhow. So um, I just say we're advancing a little portion of the project now to make sure the community's uh, in a good spot. And uh, that's my, they're my comments. So appreciate it. Thank you. Um, yeah, so thank you, Ian. Um, no, I appreciate your sharing your thinking and it's, it's, um, it's good to know. And also it seems responsible. So I appreciate it. Um, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't know if any more members of the public want to comment. I see no other raised hands. Okay, we'll bring, we'll bring it back to the committee and um, ask for uh, more discussion at all, or if Molly, you want to add anything or else I'm going to call for a vote. Thank you, I do want to add, um, you know, so I've had questions on this project and I've had questions a long time. And, and um, I think that while all my questions are not answered, I think that there has been enough uh, that I've heard today that clarifies this uh, project for me. Um, I do, I, I am uncomfortable with kicking this down the road to a date uncertain. Um, be considering the fact that this is impacting two of our projects, Pure Water Monterey and ASR, and allowing us to maximize both of them, it seems like a kind of a ridiculous thing to keep kicking this down the road. Um, I understand we have concerns about the cost and the value and all of that, but I think John laid it out pretty clearly that there's a significant chance that we could be missing out on a good amount of water by not doing this. And um, I think it's something that the full board should take up sooner rather than later. So while I would like to see more answers to these questions, because I still, you know, I still wanna know some of these uh, that are left on the list that we didn't talk about and that uh, Dave Stoll had indicated we don't have answers to yet. And Marie Post has put some time in getting us some answers. Um, I think it would be worth revisiting it, but I don't, I don't agree with the idea to, to, to delay it to some date uncertain and wait to hear what happens with other things. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a one month delay to get the, a good review in. Um, with Marina Coast's documentation and all of that, but really we're looking at our projects and as Ian said, you know, trying to maximize the amount of water that we can get for this community while other things may be in limbo. That's my two cents. Okay, well, thank you. Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm going to call for the vote on uh, an indefinite extension, uh, but it's up to the committee if, if we want to um, accelerate it back up, I think. Uh, and I think, Dave, I'm going to share this, uh, even though it's not scheduled yet. The strategic uh, discussion, the strategic planning workshop is still out there. It should be early next year. I think uh, getting the new uh, board members involved in what our priorities are going forward, this could very easily be on that agenda and maybe a key issue if that's going to be early enough. I'm just wondering, is this approximately March, do you think? I'm just guessing. Let's go first to Director Adams and then I'll, I'll try to summarize, uh, including that. Uh, you're on mute. Mary, I'll try to unmute you. You are unmuted, Mary. Thank you very much. You know, I, I don't know that we paid enough attention to the staff's recommendation. And I wonder if we should take a look at that um, to see whether that would satisfy anything. The committee recommends to the board of directors that does not approve construction of bypass pipeline modification addendum as addendum six to the ASR EIR EA until the California Coastal Commission acts on the recently resubmitted application by CalAM for a coastal development permit, which will hopefully clarify actual versus perceived pipeline need. And any unanswered components of the questions above must be answered as well. I, so. Um, yeah, so we, we wrote that before the application was deemed incomplete. So we anticipated that they would probably deem it complete and then hold a hearing. Um, so I think <clears throat> a little bit to what 
Molly's comments were and Ian's comments were, um, you know, I'd like to, to distill this down to really maybe three or four really clear pieces. One would be, does it, does it really matter whether, is it really going to affect approval or disapproval of desal or pure water Monterey expansion? You know, I think many of the folks who want this thing delayed think that it, that, that building it would answer one of the barriers to a coastal development permit and it would make it easier to get the coastal development permit. I'm not entirely convinced that that's true. Um, nevertheless, I think what John has done here statistically needs to be added into the mix because Ian's comments about um, we may not have either permanent water supply for quite some time. You know, the action to deem the coastal permit uh, application incomplete on Thursday, I haven't even digested what that means. Um, you know, if, and I need to talk to Calam at, at greater length, as well as the Coastal Commission, because if that means we're not going to see anything for 180 days, and maybe it's a reapplication, and then within 180 days of that application, there's a hearing. Um, and now this goes to Molly's comments. We're talking about water from two of the most important district projects in the portfolio. And if we suddenly find ourselves at risk of not meeting the CDO because we can't move water to where it needs to be when it's needed, then we may have done the community a disservice. So I, I think we need to kind of think those things through a little more deeply and come back to the committee with with a little more clarity and take it from there. And, you know, we can remain on indefinite. Um, I think the timeline probably does fit George's uh, comment about strategic planning in that, um, you know, that's got to happen in January with the new directors so that we can do follow up in February and then any budget impacts have to be folded in in, in March. So um, it'll probably be late January. But Dr. Garcia needs to figure out how to do it via video conferencing, and we haven't had an in-depth conversation on that yet. Um, but, but I think with more clarity, this is a discussion that can be revisited in, you know, four to six weeks. And it can just remain at this committee level until you feel the confidence to release it for certification or not. Um, uh, I'm going to go back to the motion. Uh, Mary, would you accept uh, an amendment to the motion to uh, uh, table it uh, till no later than April, just to give us a time frame to it, so that there is a there's a deadline for us or something? Yeah, yeah, I would be happy to do that. I would want to make sure, though, that that the or that that we include the uh, comments that were made that we that we get the additional information that we want that we need to have. So I, my expectation is that the staff would not be bringing anything back to us in January, February, March, or even April if we did not have the answers that we're seeking. So perhaps yeah. it's just unnecessary for me to ensure that that's added in. But yes, George, I think that would be just fine that we um, uh, table it until at the very latest April. Yeah, that's fine with me. April. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just well, go ahead. Sorry. I was I was going to call for a vote, but you want to add something before that? No, that's okay. Call for a vote is just fine. <laughs> okay. I like to call for the vote. Would you call a roll, please, Sarah Eileen? Yes. Uh, Director Adams. Aye. Director Evans. Uh, I'm going to say no because I disagree with how long it's being extended out. So my vote is no. Thank you, Director Riley. Aye. Motion approved, uh, two to one. Okay, the motion passes. It's um, it's um, table till no later than April, uh, and we will uh, address other questions uh, or the responses to to some of the questions that we didn't get to today. Um, okay, uh, we're down to discussion items, Dave. Or we're back to you on 
couple Mr. of points. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to interrupt for a moment. Unfortunately, I have a conflicting uh, commitment and I'm going to have to uh, bow out of the meeting. So my apologies to all. Thanks for clarifying uh, the motion. Okay. Okay, back to item number three, update on uh, Pure Water Monterey. Yes, so you may think that Mount Hamilton is actually up in the Bay Area, <laughs> but, but really we're gonna rename that sand dune that uh, Pure Water Monterey injection wells are at and ASR is located at, because Marine Hamilton has been project managing both uh, undertakings. <laughs> and. Uh, and there's really been quite a bit of activity. So we have uh, re, uh, we've done final commissioning on the uh, first deep well, and we're in process on the second deep well. Maureen, you want to um, raise your or Arlene, if you want to unmute Maureen, that would be great. But we <clears throat> we've seen a constant increase in injection rate. Um, it's a little unfortunate that we took uh, deep injection well two offline uh, just recently because we were starting to see some real uh, incredible injection rates. But um, we were up over, oh gosh, I don't have it in front of me, but I'd say it's approximately 230 acre feet, 238 maybe, for last month of injection. And that's with uh, some partial uh, service. But Maureen, can you? Uh, just walk us through where the uh, two shallow well, the Veda Zone wells um, project is, the final conditioning of deep injection well number two, and then the construction uh, bid uh, for uh, deep injection well four and three. Sure, um, for the Veda wells, uh, and I have Tom Caritas with Monterey One Water did manage that project. That's complete. They've begun injection into Vados Zone Well 1B, and it's going in um, very similarly to uh, with a, a level rise similar to what we experienced prior to shutting it down. So the good news is, is when we pulled the water out, um, we returned to the same state, not a worse state. Excuse me. With, uh, Excuse me, Maureen. Could you turn your sound up a little bit, please? Your volume. Or just speak where? with more gusto. Yeah, <laughs> Dave. Where is the volume again? I don't use this enough to. Um, it would be your actual machine's microphone. I don't think it's a choice in no. oh, it's settings. Here we go. Yeah, audio devices. Is this yeah. better? The input volumes all the way up to max. Is this any better? George, you're muted. Is this speak, volume any better? Speak as, speak as loud Holy as you can, as I Marie. can. Okay. <laughs> I will there do you that. Go. I apologize. <clears throat> Um, for deep injection well two final commissioning, um, the video, we video it first to which kind of informs the next steps that we're going to perform. Uh, we were able to save a couple days because there was, as, as expected, little to no growth on the well screen, so we didn't have to brush them. They dry swabbed the wells and we found that a, a good portion of the sand production was coming from the bottom part of the well. So that also is, is going to inform some of the work that we have yet to do. They added the acid. We had much better <coughs> pH control. <clears throat> the acid is there to dissolve any precipitates and kill any bio growth. And just today we started pumping that out. We're using a different removal method for this well for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, one is the well depth uh, doesn't have enough static water level. And the second is to minimize the number of days it takes to pull the acid out. The method we're using is, is gonna be a lot faster. Um, so the next steps will be well, we need to talk about the next steps. Um, we're going to see, depending on what the pulling the acid out, how much sand comes with it, will inform the final bit of information as to whether we redevelop that well 
to try to get rid of the sand that was coming through. The pump that was pulled out and the 3R valve, <clears throat> which is kind of the in-hole flow control valve uh, for these deep injection wells, showed very little wear um, given the amount of sand that came out. It, it was a huge relief to get that news. Um, they did find sand inside the 3R valve, um, but it appears that the pump is passing this very fine sand and that is not creating visible damage at this point in time. Um, the bids, I thought, Dave, that we talked about the bids last month. The contractor has mobilized yeah. and he's doing the rough grade on well, mostly well site uh, one, which is going to be where we put, where we build our first well. Uh, we've got the submittals in for the well components that are required to construct the well. And we had another bit of luck. Um, the manufacturer has a, a better screen, an abundance of it in stock. So he's offering to supply a higher quality screen at the same price. So hopefully that's the start of um, a successful and, and speedy project. He's also got it in stock, which helps out the schedule. That's great, very helpful. Thanks, Maureen. And I wanna add that, um, as I mentioned, our injection rates became much more robust. So when the, when the deep injection well two conditioning is finished, then we'll be able to take a look at um, how close to our performance guarantee, our water delivery guarantee we are. But it looks like we may be very, very close, which is uh, a positive given the amount of downtime we've taken for commissioning, so. Stay tuned on that one. Uh, quickly, Dave, what's the timing on having uh, well two back in operation? Uh, um, Marie? We should have it online for sure. Um, by the end of the year, the electricians are scheduled to power it back on on the 21st. There you go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Maureen, and thank you, Dave. Uh, if there's no more on that item, we'll go to the next item, ASR. And... Yeah, and this is Maureen as well. Um, be as brief as you can because I think people are getting tired, but oh, um, it's looking good out there. Yeah, we're wrapped up just uh, waiting for the fence guys to come back with the right amount of fencing and wind that up. Almost nothing has happened this month. And we're dying to get you out to see some of these facilities, um, but we're having, you know, Governor Newsom's being uh, uncooperative with our rebellion uh, that we want to go see our sites, especially with the two new, new directors. Um, but we're going to try to figure something out um, because the Sleepy Hollow Fish Rearing Facility is just a complete changeover from what you have ever seen before. ASR is a complete changeover. Um, it is good news that uh, Google Maps now has Pure Water Monterey in its satellite imagery. So if you go on, you can kind of see from above all the way from down below where the back flush, the percolation pond is, um, all the way up to some of the well sites and the monitoring well sites. So um, while we're sheltered in place, you know, go to Google Maps and take a look. And uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, but it's it's looking really good. Um, and we appreciate all the hard work that Marine's been putting in. Field staff, you know, John and his people, you know, they're still still doing water quality monitoring. Um, you know, we still got people doing stream flow gauging. Uh, so, you know, we've got crews out there doing things. Um, it hasn't been a, you know, a holiday, but, you know, we're into our ninth month of uh, supposed shelter in place, and these people have had to be out there on the front lines. And um, it's not always been easy when, you know, some of the subcontractors have contracted COVID and so forth. So we're, we're doing pretty good um, and the projects are looking beautiful. So. And you had to be out on some of the firefighting uh, expeditions as well. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Whenever uh, I have to go out for um, essential travel, I try to work it so I can come through General Jim Moore Boulevard just to look at the uh, at the building, <laughs> they look so great, and I I know what they are, and it's very exciting. I take people on 
little tours just to drive them past it. <laughs> good, yeah. good. Um, last question is uh, the last <laughs> item. Are there any suggestions on uh, future agendas um, for comment? I've got one question, Dave. Um, I'm 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 uh, been active on the Watermaster. I want to raise a question about reimagining the replenishment fund, which is related to supply in the um, uh, seaside groundwater basin. I'm just wondering how to treat that question that I have, and I don't know if it would be a committee question. Uh, should I just talk to you offline? Uh, what? Yeah, sure. And you know, I can. Uh spend time with John and figure out if it's something that this committee should look at or not. But yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll be in touch online. Okay. There's nothing more. Uh, Vaughn, thank you all. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Ian. Uh, thank you, John. And thank you, everybody. Meeting adjourned. Molly, are you in New York? I am. Oh, well, I hope you're settling in. I saw John had his, uh, Lear had his hand up. Did you have something to add? I think he was waving goodbye. <laughs>